of your textbook is slope as a rate of change. Um, so our goal is to use slope to find rate of change, which will be very simple, very as you can see. Uh, you will see. Um, just a quick little thing. Charlie's obviously anxious to pay, play, but I will not be swayed by his pink uh, dog. I'm not going to play. We're going to do math instead, and so will Charlie. Okay. So we're just going to write into example to show to show what I mean. Okay. Um, Ferd takes five minutes to run a lap around the track. So it's a 400 meter track. It takes him five minutes to do it. Okay. And the first thing, they, the quest, first question it asks us to find is average speed. Well, you know, whether you've done this calculation or not before, uh, you know, speed can be found using distance and time, right? Um, because he went four meters in five minutes, that would sort of reflect his speed. And if we wanted to know how many meters he could go per minute, then it would be 40, 400 divided by five, which is 80, uh, 80 meters every minute. Okay, um, you know the hint I'm giving you is that uh, if you're doing a distance time graph, distance is your y-axis, and uh, time is your x-axis. Time is always the x-axis, so distance is the rise, and time is the run. So if we're going to make a graph out of this in part B. You know, we're going to find a graph, uh, make a distance time graph, it would look something like this. And I just made note of the fact that time is always on the x um, until I'm proven wrong. <laughs> always is a very strong word in mathematics, but uh, we'll go with that. So uh, if you just want to fill out the grid, I chose uh, intervals of minutes. Whoops, that's, a, that's an error right there. Shot seconds, minutes on the x-axis. Right? So... One, so just one, two, three, four, five, you know, go on and on, jump by fives. And distance in meters on the y axis, and I went up by hundreds, so 100, 200, 300, 400, so that's one full lap, right? Five, six, seven, eight, whatever. Okay? And in part B, it asks us to prepare a distance time graph of his run. So if we were to do that, we could perhaps use, um, you know, his first set of data, sort of his first lap to do that. Okay, and we could say, okay, well, he starts at zero time in zero meters. So when he runs his first lap, he hasn't run anything yet, and no time has passed. And after five minutes, he's made it to 400. 400 meters, right, in five minutes. So we can make a uh, graph out of that and connect the dots. Say, okay. That, and quite frankly, this, well, he probably, truthfully, he'd probably slow down after one lap. But, you know, if you continue theoretically forever like that, okay? And since it's theoretically forever, I should make this look like an arrow. Okay, but here's our here's our main points that we care about. Right, his starting point zero zero, which is kind of like x one y one, right? And you know we'll look at one full lap, and there's a nice point of uh, 5 minutes and 400 meters. Now a good example of why sometimes we don't um, we don't just count boxes would be this one where our scale is not the same. See here we have it going up by single minutes and then here we have it jumping by hundreds of meters. So if you try to just count the boxes you would end up with a slope that's very different than it, than it in fact is. But if we're going to use, this would be a good time to use um, the formula for rise over run. So slope equals rise over run, which is change in y over change in x. y2 minus y1.
and that would be equal to uh, our second y point would be here. So we started here. So this is our first x and our first y, and here's our second x and our second y. So y2 is 400, y1 is 0, over 5 minus 0. And just thinking about units, it's actually 400 uh, meters, and the time is actually uh, minutes. Okay? And that leads us to 405 over 5, which is in fact uh, 80 meters per minute. So the conclusion there is that slope and speed, in this case, are exactly the same thing. Oh, I prepared the graph, and that's part C, calculating the slope. So again, you can make the conclusion then that slope equals rate of change. And in this case, speed is the rate of change of distance. And finally, that third is actually pretty slow because it wouldn't take, I don't think, any of you guys five minutes to, to run a lap of our, of our track outside. Okay, moving on. So in this question it's saying, a car uses gasoline at a rate of 0 0.5 liters per kilometer. Assume a full tank holds 50 liters of gas. And I put down this hint because I think it's important. If you see the word per, you're talking about rate of change. It's something changing with something. Okay? So when I say, what is the rate of change of gasoline in the tank? Well, rate of change is the per. Is the statement. So here it is. This is the rate of change. Okay? That's the rate of change. 0 0.5 liters per kilometer. Um, you could write it like this. Per is like a divide. Okay? 0 0.5 liters per one kilometer. Okay? Um, prepare a graph of volume of gas versus distance driven. And I guess before we do that, I wanted to think about a few things. We know that x-axis is independent. Which is independent in this case? Fuel co consumption or distance. So which, what is dependent on what or what's not dependent on what? And uh, you know, if you think about that for a minute, the answer is distance is independent. Because, now unlike the last example we did where distance was dependent on time, and that's true, but now you know, the fuel consumption, the more, the more meters you drive, the more gas you'll use. It doesn't really go the other way around. The gas consumption or fuel consumption is completely dependent on how far you drive. right? So that means that distance is going to be the x and fuel consumption will be the y. And then this last thought is should the slope be positive or negative? And this is very interesting because um, it says prepare a graph of volume of gas which is volume of gas in the tank versus distance driven. So when you think about it, it's going to start with the most gas and then it's going to end up going lower. Okay? So it's starting with a lot of gas and it's going to drop. And that really means that the slope is going to be negative. Okay? Because it's starting with a full tank and it's going to drop all the time. So a negative slope. And that's so now we have an idea of what we're going to look for in our answer. I'm just going to change the screen so we can see it a bit better. Okay. So here's our graph. Mm. You can see the whole thing, okay? So fuel on the y-axis, kilometers or distance on the x-axis, and I chose a scale of going up by tens, 10 kilometers. That's a 10, it's like 0, 0 to start, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, right? On the x. And on the Y, go up by uh, 5 liters. So 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. I stopped at 50 because that's as much gas as I'll ever have in my tank. Never going to go for more full than that. Okay? So there's my starting point. And if I was going to give that a coordinate, I would say 0 on the X. When I've driven no kilometers, I've got 50 liters in the tank. Right? That's kilometers. And 50 liters. As soon as I start to drive, this is going to drop. So when I prepare my graph, now I have to think about if I started, if I use this point next, or I could think about rate of change, right? So for every kilometer that I drive, it's going to drop by 0.5 of a liter. Okay? Well, 
what if I drove 10 kilometers? I want to find, you know, my next point right here. So when I drive 10 kilometers then, how many, how many liters of gas will it use? If I use half a liter every kilometer, that means I'll use 5 liters for 10 kilometers. Right? You start with, if I go by 10 here, 10 here. So 5 liters when I've driven 10 kilometers. And then that becomes really my slope, right? So I might just write that down. That's really the same as saying 5 liters every 10 kilometers. Okay? So you're driving along, you cover 10 kilometers, you use 5 liters of gas. So now I have um, it's a negative slope. So I'm going to go over 10, over 10, down 5, over 10, down 5, over 10, down 5. Okay? Over 10, down 5. That looks like an empty tank right there. So when I hit the x-axis, that's at 100 kilometers, I've got zero gas. Okay, now I'll just finish my line to it. I'm going to make it a line segment because I'm not going to go any further than that. Once I've got zero gas, I'm done. There we go. Okay. So, then it asks the question, how many kilometers can the dr car drive before it's out of gas? Well, I'm out of gas right here at 100 kilometers. So the answer to part C is 100 kilometers. So that one's a little bit harder, I think, because the slope isn't as obvious on that graph. But um, you can get, as long as you're okay with that idea that, you know, half a liter over one kilometer, it's kind of the same as saying five liters and ten kilometers. So if you're using half a liter every kilometer, that means you're using five liters every ten. And if you're good with that, you know, this is hopefully isn't too hard of an example. All right, we'll make it bigger again. So now Ferd is filling his pool. And the volume of water in the pool, as he fills it, so he starts at 10,000 liters. So if you have a pool, you know that usually an in-ground pool, you don't empty it, or a permanent pool, you don't empty it uh, in the, in the uh, winter time. You do leave some water in the pool. So say you have 10,000 liters to start, and you fill it up, okay? And this is the rate, the rate that he fills it. Okay, so what is the initial volume of water in the pool? Well, that would be initial means before any time has passed, right? Right there, 10,000 liters. Whoops, oh no, that's right. Okay. How long will it take the pool to fill to a level of 50,000 liters? All we have to do is read this off the graph. So 50,000 is right here, come across to here, right. come down, I'm going to read it right off the graph, and it looks like 60, and it's count, each bulk must mean 2, 4, 6, 8, no, 62 and a half, 65, 67 and a half, right there, so each of these bulks represents 2 and a half, we'll go up by 2 and a half, 5, 67 and a half, okay. so it would take Make sure you're clear on that, that that's 62 and a half. And then that would be 65, and that would be 67 and a half. So it would take 67 and a half minutes. You're just reading that straight off the graph. Um, find the slope of this graph. So we want to use. We can use this point right here. Remember, um, 
This is a case where you don't want to just do rise over run as far as counting boxes. So this point here is uh, on the X is 67.5 and on the Y and on the Y it's 50,000. Okay, that would be minutes or hours. Oh, hours, that's a long time, meters. Make sure if we use the right units in the right answer here. No, I said minutes. <laughs> That's completely wrong. Down here should be hours, just using the same scale as right there. <laughs> okay, so find the slope. So to find the slope, then in this case, I'm going to use um, I'm going to use y2 and y1, and x2 and x1. So here, this point, this first point is zero in the x and ten thousand in the y. So the rise is y2 minus y1, which is 50,000 minus y1, which is 10,000, over, there's my x2, y2, over 67.5 minus 0. Okay. So that would be x1 and y1. Okay? And so if I worked that out, I get 40,000 in the rise. And 67.5 in the run. And that works out to about 60, 640 liters per minute. Again, I should make a point. That's liters and that's minutes, right? Or hours, sorry. Hours in the rise and, geez, not hours in the rise. liters on the rise, and hours on the run. Okay, So that means 640 liters per hour. Now, the next question asks us what does, um, so find the slope, and we've done that. And now what does the slope represent? Well, it really is, we said that slope is rate of change. This time it's the rate of change of water in the pool with time. And the units for it are liters per my error again, liters per hour. And, and it's basically the rise units, whatever units are on this axis, per whatever units are on this axis. Okay? Uh, I think this is the last example for today's note. Use this graph to calculate his cycling speed. So now we know that speed equals rate of change, which equals slope. Equals rate of change, which equals slope. So we basically just have to find Bird's slope, the slope on this graph. Okay? So looking at it, we have um, meters on the y and time on the x. Just have to find two points, essentially. So it's always good to find where it crosses exactly. I think right there it crosses quite nicely. So you pick a point. You can pick any point you want. So finding slope, you can pick any point. This is a perfect point to pick because it's 0, 0. It's going to make the math easier, right? 0, 0. So if you can, choose 0, 0. And then here I just chose one because it's exactly, well, they all cross nicely, OK? And I'm going to use this one that I have an X of 11 and a Y of coming across looks like 110. Okay. So slope, which is the same as speed, rise over 1, and the rise will be 110 
meters minus zero meters over 11 seconds minus zero, right? X2 minus X, sorry, Y2 minus Y1 over X2 over X1. So it's 110 divided by 11 or 10 meters per second. And that would be his speed. Okay, so if you have any more questions about this note, just uh, write it down there. And that's it for today.